welcome to Leaders of Tomorrow, India's only daily television platform for small businesses. Over the past seven years, we have understood what matters the most to you, the entrepreneur. And in year eight, we're taking head on two of your most pressing concerns, that of mentoring and funding. I'm Sunanda Jai Seelan. Tonight, we're bringing you highlights of a panel discussion that we do as part of a 16-city roadshow across the length and breadth of the country to connect better with you, the entrepreneur. Tonight, highlights of the first such roadshow that we did in Pune, talking about sustainability and innovation for technology. Just before we come to the highlights of that panel discussion, though, I want to bring you snippets of a very exciting format that we're doing on Season 8 of Leaders of Tomorrow that we're calling the Wadwani Takeoff, brought to you by Wadwani Foundation. This is an entrepreneurship program that aims to empower aspiring and early stage startups, which will be showcased here on ET Now. Winners standing a chance to win an all expense paid trip to Silicon Valley for mentoring and also to pitch to angel investors. Take care. program will be conducted across 16 cities. Pune is the first of our 16 cities where five selected startups will be pitching to a live audience and an eminent jury like we have in front of us today. We are now like to introduce Aarti Chhabria, who is the founder and CEO of Clap Global. We've created an annual subscription for global exposure for parents at a 5,000 rupees and we do it in three ways. So you can interact with travelers through webinars, through face-to-face -face meeting interactions or through our live video content which is also pre-recorded and has an impact assessment attached to it. In the last two years, we've clocked a revenue of a crore that has impacted 14,000 students and built a traveler community across 130 countries. What I couldn't understand was you're trying to raise about two and a half crores. Uh, five crores. Five crores, okay, five crores. Uh, how much have you already raised? We've raised four and a half crores, that was three years ago. That was to, do, to build up the product, proof of concept, proof of business model, which we've done. Now we want to build up to go to the next milestone. So is, is your target to reach 50 from 14 a little under ambitious or is there it's a market realistic. limitation? You know, no. It, I rather under promise and over deliver and the way the market is going, I'm not trying to just make money to scale up faster. Right? It needs to be sustainable growth. I'd now I'd like to invite Vikas Koh. Uh, he's the Chief Product Officer of Impact Guru. We are a healthcare financing platform that helps patients fund their out-of-pocket medical expenses via crowdfunding. The problem we are focusing on is a $60 billion market opportunity to finance healthcare expenses specifically for critical illnesses like cancer, organ transplant, where loans do not work, but crowdfunding does. How would you ensure that you, uh, you have the request coming from authenticated uh, requests? We have a three-step process through which every campaign, every fundraiser goes through. The first thing is that every patient or family member is required to upload relevant hospital documents that include the patient ID, include the estimate or the disease that the patient is undergoing and the treatment is required for. Second, we vet every case with first of all our hospital partnerships and verify these details and go through the regular process of KYC. And third, all the funds which are raised on the fundraiser are given and transferred to the hospital account for the treatment of the patients. I'm now going to invite a final pitch session. Uh, WorkApps, it's Rudraji Desai who's the founder. WorkApps is an enterprise grade messaging platform for the banking space. Currently in India and as we understand in Europe, there is nobody who's catering to this space. We cater to banks, insurance, financial services, NBFCs, mutual funds, payments wallets. How do the financial institutions pay you? So three models, enterprise license fee, smaller companies, most of the mutual funds, they pay us on a monthly fixed fee basis. Wallets. How do the financial institutions pay you? So three models, enterprise license fee, smaller companies, most of the mutual funds, they pay us on a monthly fixed fee basis and some other companies pay us on a SaaS model also. It's time to bring you highlights of that panel discussion from Pune where I spoke about what sustainability means in today's day and age, how innovation and technology can go hand in hand and should go hand in hand for sustainability and also some real life examples for the entrepreneurs in the audience when it comes to sustainability. Take a listen. We're talking 
innovation and technology for sustainability and i couldn't think of a better panel to discuss this than the one that we have with us here tonight uh, i want to kick off the panel by discussing the theme that we have and uh, uh, read out some data that we have india ranking 110 when it comes to the global sustainability index this is as of 2017 we could be you know it could be argued that we are uniquely placed because we have nearly 20% of the world's population but only 4% when it comes to the world's natural resources keeping that in mind and keeping the overarching theme of the panel in mind i am opening this up to each of you on the panel and probably you know come to my immediate right and ask you what in your mind do you think is really that opportunity and perhaps what is the biggest challenge when it comes to technology innovation talking sustainability when we talk about sustainability i think we all have to think about social uh, environmental as well as the economical lot of time when we speak about sustainability people you know forget about economics and that's where a lot of companies fail if innovation doesn't become sustainable it becomes a hobby that's what i think um, and when you say about the natural resources uh the data says that in every year we use three times more than the world's natural resources which is a crime and we all need to do something about it and i think india is doing better in last couple of years simply because the movement ha- is turning you know a lot of people are getting aware because of swachh bharat now sure prashant we all heard of this sdgs by 2030 is supposed to have this sustainable development goals on which the whole world is working together it is an interesting tagline if you see the tagline says no one left behind no one left behind for no one to be left behind you need to have socio economic impact that has a speed as well as the wider coverage that's possible only if you use technology and innovation now look at what's happening in various sectors right let me just take very quickly couple of sectors energy healthcare education take another one possibly energy the solar prices in last 10 years dropped down by 90% 80 90% you have lot more people who are accessing energy lot more sustainable development with distributed energy who is what's happening in agriculture we are talking precision agriculture all the way in africa what's happening in healthcare we're talking about use of ai and ml in healthcare right what's happening in education we're talking about moocs the last line on this is the following who is developing all of this who is developing the drones for agri who is developing the moocs for education who is developing what's happening in energy that's the small solar things all of these sure. are startups delivering the global sustainability sure so that's, that's the relevant the opportunity manika sure so um i feel like you know there are different levels of of uh uh people and organizations right so you have the government at one level then you have the corporates and then you have the individuals my sense is and coming from an education background i feel that unless you percolate down to the absolute grassroots level i mean you can't leave sustainability uh as a challenge just for the larger corporates and the governments to do right so so when you democratize that and ensure that it percolates down to the absolute individuals and and communities that's when you can really have sustainability happen at a at a at a really large level otherwise it just remains something that just a few people are trying to do so i do agree with him that startups and because i i support a lot of startups that i can see a lot of new age startups wanting to be social entrepreneurs wanting to be responsible but i think at the individual and community level also it needs to kind of work like sure rajendra there are these three circles around every organization the first one is the economy the second one is probably the society do something beyond just do well for the economy help the society and then finally the environment itself but i think it's 500 600 years ago when this uh, chief native american chief when the westerners were coming in and uh, uh, they were invading their territory he came up with this beautiful quote i read it here when the last tree has been cut down the last fish caught the last river poisoned only then will we realize that one cannot eat money it's actually connected it's not as if sustainability is something else and this is something else so i think uh, if we realize that that is the uh, intrinsic motivation you will get not some sop from the government not some feel good factor that you have to do something to do better but something intrinsic 
that it can also benefit the environment while doing good for yourself as an economy sure yeah. i just want to come back to what rajnagendran was you know talking about very scary yeah, the quote that you know you just read out to us but equally true of what's happening today so my question uh, to you and this is open to the rest of the panel why has sustainability perhaps moved from being a nice to do to a must do the economic reason for sustainability for businesses today i think we are becoming socially conscious and i think the next generation is putting a lot of pressure on us you know i think we are seeing that the younger generation is uh, you know on a strike so i think that responsibility of what you were saying is uh, they are putting on us and i think because consumers are becoming socially aware i think it's uh, companies are doing it as well okay i just want to talk about the fact that the government in the union budget uh, or the recently announced union budget uh, revealing plans to support private entrepreneurship in farm produce and value added farm produce essentially good move that you see as far as encouraging more sustainable products coming out of the country is that something you would want to comment on perhaps para and this is open to everyone as well so i i feel that's very important today uh, innovation at every stage and particularly at the farming stage it's very important uh, with the way infrastructure changing and farming is going to play a very very important role and agriculture needs lots of support at many ends which usually i think so still is a challenge whenever there is any natural disaster it's it becomes very difficult to make things on track so where innovation will play a very very important role uh, predicting important things which can actually help uh, to raise farmers because i think so okay agriculture is the base where every country will build and i, I some, sometimes i feel that that's where probably you're not focusing on Sure. for sure this is something on that if we have aspiration to go to that 5 trillion dollar economy one of those few impediments that we got is agricultural reform given the size and shape of agriculture that we have in the country as compared to many other countries with that backdrop this intervention and many other such interventions for the reform are much needed there is no other way out there to get the 15% contribution of agri in our gdp to perform a lot better than it's performing today Let's take a quick break on that note. Much more on the other side, though. Do stay tuned. Welcome back to the Asian Viewers of Tomorrow tonight, bringing you highlights from a panel discussion that we did as part of the 16 City Road Show in Pune. for the first time has also gotten involved in the sense that the government has given the mandate as far as sustainability is concerned to an important body like the niti aayog it could be argued that perhaps they don't have as much implementation as they should have as much teeth perhaps as they should have to ensure that it becomes effective but a start has been made good bad any thoughts on that what niti aayog is doing on promoting the zero budget farming is the promoting agenda of sustainability that's very good i feel there is a feedback system required everywhere whenever we implement any system we don't have any anything which measures and unless and until we have a measuring mechanism i don't think so the change can happen the government has lots of ideas they want to implement lot many things but the people who are actually implementing it there is no feedback system that there is nothing like a self correcting system which can help and unless and until we get into that habit uh things won't change we will always have that government is implementing everything but things are not changing okay i have one more question as far as the role of the government is concerned and that is again uh, being seen as positive on the part of industry the government announcing that spends on r&d as far as scientific research is concerned uh, will now also be possible under csr i see a lot of heads nodding uh, do you think that's definitely good yeah, it is good but i think to see it in a real time will take some time you know it's going to take because lot of time things happen on the top but to actually get somebody to do r&d or get the funds is going to take a time and i think you know we'll see in the coming year so i wanted to mention that one of the verticals we have at badwani foundation is badwani invent and this is a fund separately um, put aside uh, for scientific innovations and we are working closely with the government to to make that happen so i think i'm seeing a lot of action on okay, that okay so definitely a positive move aditya as uh, an entrepreneur who is in this space india is the only country in the world that has 
you know, announce this move. Do you think you'll start seeing the trickle-down effects really of this announcement? Are you positive on that? Are you hopeful? I think that uh, scientific innovation has developed a lot of uh, has developed a lot of new models and products. Uh, the most of the products which we do and which we try to endeavor to sort of um, you know launch in the market has so much to do with the that's so unique that um, because the problems today we face are very unique, right? Um, the water crisis. I mean, who would have thought that um, a world, a, a planet which 70% water had you know so less of fresh water, right? So. I think it's more important that um, scientific research is sort of promoted, but it's done so with with collaboration with the industry because, um, like like Meera said, that any 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 venture without an industry application is an hobby. So I think uh, you know I think that's what's going to drive it now. Research showing that while it's great that so much CSR you know spends etc is happening, 80% of all the CSR spends are still happening by large companies. Smaller companies still are not doing that. So I would like for each of our panelists perhaps uh, to use this to give specific examples to our entrepreneurs to help them understand this is how you should be looking at sustainability if you're an entrepreneur or a small business. Any any lessons? So actually. I am against the concept of a CSR itself because, first of all, when you have some department or a corner of the company doing some CSR, you tend to think that it's like security. Somebody else is taking care of it. But today, security is the responsibility of every individual. Similarly, the putting it on the government and expecting the government to take care of it, when you bring the government in, you're not talking sustainability. Right? You, are, you are talking long term, we are talking marathon. So I have an issue about bringing in CSR and uh, uh, sustainability and government and sustainability first of all. It should be the responsibility of every individual, in every team, in every company. Let me come to my far left uh, and I want you to talk about the role that funding has played for an entrepreneur like yourself because you're in such a niche space. I do understand you bootstrap, you know, would you look at funding? Have you already explored it? What's that experience been like? Um, so essentially, I mean, it's quite it's quite interesting that there are about I would say 500 different companies in the eco-friendly space. Eco-friendly is, is a large word, but there are about 500 different startups now, and um, the number of funded one, I mean, I, I can't even remember of maybe a single name, right? So I think sustainability today in India is still at its day zero, um, but I think it's growing really well. So I mean, we are also we have a lot of active conversations with with investors, but um, I still think that the the whole the whole mindset and the whole the whole awareness needs to grow, and then eventually we'll be in a place where. Um, but we can't wait for that day. Right? So I mean, for us also, it's really like we're really active, and I think um, that sort of activity is creating a bit of awareness. So I think a lot of startups maybe we can lead the way, but I think a lot of them will also pull this way forward. So. Okay, and that's reflecting in the sales numbers you've seen within inception of just about eight odd months. Yeah, I mean, so we've launched about uh, Bico started. Um, I mean, launched in the market in March of this this year, and we've already crossed over 1,500 stores. We are across all online channels. So I think that all the new offline stores. I mean, just to share with everyone here that all the offline stores now. So if you go to a Kirana store, the new store which is next to it is an organic store, and you know that niche is being catered to by uh, different entrepreneurs, whether it's in technology, um, in e-commerce, um, and even in offline. So I think that's that's really great for each one and. Each one of us can be the change here, which we can choose to buy, you know, a greener alternative or opt for a greener choice every sure. time we've been given one. Rajendran, uh, we spoke about, you know, the role that technology is playing for you at the company when it comes to sustainability. But big picture, if the audience was to take lessons away from what you're doing at Soho, what would you want to leave them with? I think live and let live. Gino, Gio or Gine do? Yeah, that's pretty important. That's something that, that's not about the environment. That's about even for your own survival. You need, for your own thriving, you need to ensure that an ecosystem is there. Get away from competition. Learn to cooperate. Learn to um, shake hands and integrate with other companies. That's what Zoho does. Today, Zoho realizes even though we have 50 different products, we know that there is going to be somebody who is um, entrenched in some particular product. We need to have an integration built into that. We have hooks into hundreds and thousands of products because we know that we have to cooperate and sustain work with you. Thanks for that, Rajendran. I want to talk to you, Monica, uh, as part of your closing comments about the role that skilling has for people who are in you know, the social sector. As an expert uh, in the overall piece when it comes to skilling and you know, how people are being skilled, reskilled and trained, do you think that piece is perhaps something which is missing in India right now? 
Yeah, so I think that uh, our skilling sector only does what our schools and colleges don't do. So we, we kind of try to quick fix people who went through the schooling and college system and now somehow we've got to bridge the gap between industry and academia and put them into employment. Uh, I actually think we need to rethink skilling because really what the future of work is going to require and what, what we call 21st century skills is really different from what we're thinking of as skilling. So, so really it's not so much the hard skills, but my opinion is it's, it's a lot more of the communication and the collaboration and uh, the out-of-the-box thinking, critical thinking, is what's going to make you successful in the future. And, and of course, the sustainable and the you know, environmental protection part. So I really think we need to rethink what skilling means and uh, probably do it m much earlier in life so that we're not really trying to just do a quick fix. Uh, Prashant, as someone who's uh, talking to these hundreds and thousands of SMEs uh, on a daily basis, my question to you is what perhaps are one or two of the biggest pain points they're expressing to you when it comes to sustainability, using technology and sustainability? sustainability, any conversations around that that you want to use to give some insights to the audience? Sure. I think uh, SMEs uh, by nature have far lesser resources and hence they end up thinking it to be a luxury to think of sustainability. But it is not necessarily so. What we have been able to do is get some of the SMEs who have implemented sustainability initiatives and benefited from it. When you get an SME on the stage and able to tell you in the recent slowdown, I have slowed down a lot lesser than everybody else around me because I have implemented sustainability, you would all want to listen to it. That's what we would want to continue to do. That's what we have been doing. Sure. Uh, Meera, my question to you is the same that uh, you know, I was asking Aditya. Is it difficult to be in this space from the point of view of raising funds? What's your experience been? Uh, what would you like to leave the audience with? When we started, we started with our own money. Nobody wanted to give us any funding because everybody thought waste management is not a sector to be. And things have changed in the last few years. We received uh, foreign funding last year. Uh, I also believe that, you know, next few years are going to be exciting for the waste management sector because the more uh, waste we are creating, at the same time, we are getting aware of it. So I think, you know, uh, it is taking time. We need to create market for it because, unfortunately, I work in plastic. And, uh, you know, there is not much market for the recycled plastic. You know, big companies need to say that we are going to uh, use it in our products. Only then you will have people recycling it because people do work in pockets. But if it doesn't have that much larger effect. Thank you very much to all of our panelists here tonight. Completely out of time on this episode of Leaders of Tomorrow. Wadwani take off a very exciting format for startups and entrepreneurs where they battle it out in front of the who's who. That's going to happen at each of the 15 other cities that we're going to across the country this season. If you want to know more and if you want to rush in your applications for the next one, which is coming up at Raipur on the 18th of October, do take a look at the URL which is up on your screens. If you have any feedback on the show or this episode, our contact details up in just a second. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.